For Crema Media's Policy, I'm Sane Lamini, researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Satna, joins me for Satna's View, a weekly commentary on South Africa's political scene. Hi, Raymond. Hi. What do you see as the significance of the loss of the National Union of Mine Workers General Secretary job by Franz Baleni in elections at the weekend? Um, I think it's very important. I think we must understand that NUM has been an important force within COSATU from the beginning. Mm. Uh, in fact, it was uh, the backbone in the formation of COSATU at the end of 1985. Someone like Sir Ramaphosa played a very important role then, although he didn't take an office in COSATU. But the first president of COSATU uh, Elijah Bahai was from NUM. Uh, two general secretaries, um, uh, uh, Vavi and uh, Khalima Modlante come from National Union of Mine Workers, and two or three ANC secretary generals, Mantashe, Modlante, and Ramaphosa come from uh, NUM. So NUM, NUM has been historically a very important union in COSATU, but also in the alliance. Uh, I remember once going to a COSATU conference when uh, Mantashe was not yet general secretary, but he was obviously very powerful in COSATU. He was just sitting there, sitting back, watching how things were going to work, and I think he had arranged various things who would be, he was a key figure in arranging who would be elected and whatever. And this is because Num was so powerful. But in the last year or two, all the unions in COSATU have had a sense of unease amongst the members because there has been this rift or this chasm developing between office holders who now earn very high salaries, especially Baleni, and the membership. And <coughs> there's a big dis distance between head office and bureaucrats at other levels of the union and the um, workers. Now, in the case of NUM, this was made worse by a perception amongst mine workers that they were very close to the mine, mining companies. And it came very much to the fore at the time of the Marikana massacre, where uh, NUM was not seen to, ta to be taking the cause of the mine workers as seriously as AMCU, and in consequence, Amku supplanted Num at many of these mines, at some of these mines, platinum, the platinum belt particularly. So part of the background then is the sense that uh, Num was in decline. Uh, the N uh, National Union of Metal Workers, NUMSA, is now, was, is now bigger than NUM. NUM used to be the biggest union in Kosatu, but before its expulsion, NUMSA got more members. But also, part of the background to Baleni's uh, losing this election is the NUMSA question that NUMSA was seen to be poaching members from uh, NUM and other unions, and that was given as one of the reasons for its expulsion. And NUM was very instrumental, Baleni was very instrumental in the expulsion of NUMSA, but also in the dismissal of Vavi as General Secretary of COSATU. So I think many people, well the NUMSA people and Vavi are celebrating Baleni's defeat and they think that this will be a very significant change. Um, and I think it does change the configuration of forces in 
Num and in Kosatu, although we must not exaggerate this because the um, president, the new p newly elected president, uh, Pit Matosa, who was deputy president, was also involved in all the things that Baleni did. So it's not that there's going to be one view from Num. And what does the election of the new General Secretary David Siponze mean for NOMSA and other reconfigurations within the trade union movement? You see, for, uh, no, uh, for Kosatu, it creates problems uh, because the Klamini group, the president of Kosatu, was very dependent on NUM. Now, Sipunzi has said on his election that this thing of NUMSA being expelled must be reviewed and the, I think he's also indicated uh, that he's sympathetic to reviewing the question of Vavi's expulsion. So I think for the uh, Stu Tlamini group, it is a problem in that uh, there's an uncertainty there. Even though uh, the leadership of NUM has different tendencies, as I've indicated, this uh, man, uh, Pit Matosa, the president, was uh, of the same views as Baleni. And I think we can assume that the membership doesn't have one view, although by electing uh, Sipundi they've really indicated uh, a change of direction because, in fact, the earlier statements of the new General Secretary were that they had to bring NUMSA back into the fold. Uh, but that doesn't uh, automatically mean that everything that NUMSA stands for will be supported by this new General Secretary. He's made it very clear that he doesn't agree with NUMSA's stand on the ANC. And that is very important because the ANC would see the real danger for them if the idea of no longer supporting the ANC in the elections, which NUMSA has uh, already uh, followed, uh, would gain traction amongst NUM. Now, this uh, Sipunzi said, ANC is like Moses for us leading us to the promised land politically. So he's made it very clear that while he reckons Kosatu cannot uh, go on without NUMSA, that doesn't mean that they'll follow every position of NUMSA. And I think it's important to understand that from a purely union perspective, uh, some people separate uh, their political affiliations and building the union. For example, even though NUMSA decided that it would not support the ANC in the elections, that doesn't mean that every member of NUMSA didn't vote for the ANC. Many of them probably did. And in fact, they've con conceded this. So I think it's very, very important, but I don't think it's clear uh, what change this will entail. And I think there's going to be contestation within NUM, within COSATU, within the alliance. And this adds more complication. And complication, I think, is more interesting than people just uh, going in one direction. Uh, so this will... I think, make uh, the political situation more volatile. Thanks. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krima Media's polity about the continued turmoil in Kosatu.